Okay, in this video today I want to show you what in my opinion is the very best way to test a mass airflow sensor to see if it's measuring the airflow properly. Now when I was first learning how to diagnose mass airflow sensors many years ago as a technician, I would ask more experienced technicians how to do it and I would get advice like tap it with a screwdriver handle or unplug it and see if it runs better or just replace the sensor and see if it fixes it. Now I'm not a really big fan of guessing and checking. I like to diagnose things correctly, so I want to show you how to diagnose this correctly. Now this method does require you to have a scan tool that logs data and can export that data into Excel. And your Snap-on scan tools usually can't do this, but I like to use the OBD Fusion app on my smartphone and you can buy a generic Elm327 connector to go with it. And you can get into this for as little as $15 if you want to do this. I would say that this is also probably the best way to diagnose any type of a fuel system problem that you're having. And I'll cover some of that in another video, but I think that it's worth it to invest in some type of a data logger. I have another video that shows you how to set up that app to log the data, so go ahead and watch those videos if you don't know how to do this. We're going to log the OBD2 data, and these are the PIDs that we want to collect. We want to get the short-term fuel trim and the long-term fuel trim. If you have more than one bank on your engine, get the long-term and short-term fuel trim for each of the banks, so you'll have four PIDs. Get the engine RPM PID and get the mass airflow PID in grams per second. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start this car, let it idle, leave it in park or neutral, and once the engine RPM stabilizes, we'll raise the RPM to approximately 1000 RPM and hold it there for about 10 seconds so that it stabilizes there and then raise the engine RPM to 2,000 RPM and hold it there for about 10 seconds, and then 3,000 and then 4,000. Just don't go to the point where the rev limiter kicks in because that shuts off the injectors and it will mess up our readings here. And once you've collected this data, and it should only take you about 30 or 40 seconds to log this data, export it into a CSV file so that you have it in Excel like this. Now there are a lot of ways that a mass airflow sensor can fail but we're just going to be talking about how to determine if the mass airflow sensor is accurately reading the airflow that's coming into the engine. And that's a very common problem, that the mass airflow sensor gets dirty and it doesn't read the air accurately, and it usually causes the engine to run lean. Basically, we're going to look at the grams per second. Now, just as a rule of thumb, as the engine is idling, you can see that the engine RPM here is about 600 RPM, you should have approximately as many grams per second as you have liters of displacement in the engine. So if this was a 5.7 liter engine, you'd expect approximately 5.7 grams per second. Now don't get too hung up on that. That's not what really matters. What does matter is that when this engine RPM doubles, so if I raise this RPM from 600 to 1200, I should see this number double as well. So it should go from about 5.7 grams per second to about 11.4 grams per second. Now the best way to do this, to make sure this is really reading correctly, is to create two calculations. First, I want a total fuel trim. Total fuel trim is basically short-term fuel trim plus long-term fuel trim. Now because I have two banks, I'm going to have to add all four of those together and then divide by two. So that's very simple as well. There's my total fuel trim. Let's copy that down. Now the other calculation that I need to make here is a mass airflow to engine RPM ratio. That's done by simply dividing the mass airflow rate by the engine RPM. Now we should get something that's approximately between 0 0.002 and 0 0.010. And again, that doesn't matter either. What matters is the trend, so I'm going to copy that down. And now here's where the magic happens. I'm just going to graph all of this. I'm going to do this by highlighting these columns. I select all of my data, and I'll go back to the top of my sheet, and I will insert a line chart. What you'll notice is this blue line is engine RPM. You'll see that we did exactly as I said. We held it at 1,000 RPM, approximately 2,000 RPM, approximately 3,000, and approximately 4,000. Now, this is on all different scales, so I'm just going to double-click on the engine RPM and put it on a secondary axis, and it makes this look like a mess. So I'll come up here to this Filter button, turn off everything else, and then I just want to look at the engine RPM first. Then I'm going to add total fuel trim. We know the total fuel trim should be about zero, and we're looking at this scale on this side, and it should remain about zero throughout the entire RPM band. Now notice that it doesn't. 
As the engine RPM increases, the fuel trim increases right along with it, clear up here to about 35. So we're adding about 35% more fuel than the computer was programmed to add. So something is making this engine run lean at higher RPMs. The higher the RPM, the leaner it's running. So that's one thing that we can see. Now I'm going to turn off total fuel trim and I'm going to look now at my ratio. Now my ratio started out at 0 0.010 as we saw earlier, and it should remain constant. It should be fairly flat all the way across the RPM range right here. And we can see that it isn't. The ratio is going down, which means as the engine RPM increases, the mass airflow rate is not keeping up with it. So right there, I've just proven that we have a mass airflow sensor that's not reading correctly. That's why this is such a good way to test these sensors, is there is no question whatsoever that this mass airflow sensor is faulty. Now just to show you what this should look like, we did end up replacing the mass airflow sensor on this particular car, and we ran the same test again, so I would just want to compare this ratio before and after the repair. So you can see from this gold line that the ratio stayed approximately the same throughout the entire RPM range after replacing the sensor. So that's what it should look like. Now if you wanted to see what the fuel trim should look like, I have the total fuel trim after the repair, total fuel trim before the repair, and we can see that the total fuel trim after the repair is this gray line, and it stayed pretty close to zero. In fact, it even went a little bit negative, which very obviously fixed the problem we had where it was running lean in the first place. So if you're like me and you like to accurately diagnose things before you replace parts, this is the best way to diagnose a mass airflow sensor, so I hope this helps you.